Baskets such as this one were common in many Eastern North American homes throughout the 18th and 19th centuries. Their bold graphics and colors made them desirable heirlooms, and many survive in museums and private collections. Based on its size, shape, construction, and colors, we believe that this basket was made by an artist from the Pagusset or Scaticoke groups of American Indians who lived in South Central Connecticut. While the craze for Indian artifacts in the early 20th century centered primarily on the Southwest, some designers and collectors such as Henry Davis Sleeper, Abby Aldrich Rockefeller, and Henry Francis DuPont bought and displayed decorative objects made by Native Americans from the Southwest to Canada, using them to add color and graphic emphasis. As he developed his aesthetic plan for Winterthur, Henry Francis DuPont placed these objects in spaces with examples of American folk paintings and craftsmanship. Occasionally, he noted that a particular piece was Indian, but more often than not, it was simply labeled as folk or early American. In the cottage, where he lived after Winterthur became a museum, DuPont juxtaposed baskets with federal-style desks and bookcases. Acquired as examples of early American folk art, many of the baskets, bowls, and other Native American-made objects on view in the exhibition made for the trade came to Winterthur without a clear understanding of their Native American past. While scholars and students have noted the legacy of some individual items, this collection has never before been brought together for display. My name is Dr. Laura Johnson. As curator of Made for the Trade, Native American Objects in the Winterthur Collection, I want to give you a glimpse into the treatment and repair of one Native American basket that could not be included due to its extensive conservation needs. This basket showcases the intricate work that museum conservators must undertake to preserve these important historical artifacts. Native American artists working on the eastern coast of North America made some of their baskets from thin wooden strips called splints. Splint baskets are particularly vulnerable to humidity, light, dust, and damage from handling or storage. Restoration of baskets such as this can require weeks of cleaning and stabilization. Because Winterthur uses its collections to help train conservators and curators, such work provides excellent learning opportunities for students in the Graduate Program in Art Conservation, co-sponsored by Winterthur with the University of Delaware. In their second year of coursework, conservation students declare their specialty, focusing on paper, archival materials, paintings or painted surfaces, furniture, textiles, or objects. They then take on projects that hone their conservation skills. Conservation student Aaron Anderson worked closely with instructor and Winterthur Objects Conservator Bruno Puglio to clean, treat, and gently repair this Connecticut-made basket's broken splints. First, Aaron worked with me as curator, along with Bruno Puglio, to carefully examine the basket and determine its weakest areas, probable original colors, and construction methods. We examined other baskets in the Winterthur collection to compare how the splints that make up the lid connected and how the color might have been applied. We also examined the surface with infrared and ultraviolet light techniques, which can reveal colors no longer visible. This basket showed no evidence of other designs, but examination of a similar basket did, demonstrating how important a thorough analysis can be. Once Aaron confirmed what the basket probably looked like when originally crafted, and determined how much of it could be repaired, she began her treatment by carefully vacuuming the artifact, using special attachments that would not damage the surface. After cleaning off loose surface dirt, Erin dislodged the dust that had collected in the crevices of the ash splints. By gently rubbing each splint with a clean, dry, cosmetic sponge, similar to those used to apply makeup, she removed the ingrained dirt. A small sampling of the dozens of sponges Erin used reveals just how much dirt had accumulated. They were once creamy white. After cleaning the surface, Erin turned her attention to repairing the broken splints. This basket had suffered several major breaks and had lost large sections of its splints. Many of these broken fragments were found inside the basket. However, not all of the broken material remained, so Erin could not completely repair the larger holes in the lid and side. 
However, she was able to stabilize and repair some of the worst breaks and prevent further deterioration by gently applying an easily reversible adhesive. Such repairs can be tricky. The conservator must apply just enough adhesive and then give the brake time to set under slight pressure. That time and pressure are challenging to achieve on objects with curves or uneven surfaces, which make the application of even, stable pressure difficult to maintain. To help ensure consistent, gentle pressure during drying, conservators often use rare earth magnets, which, unlike tape, leave no surface residue behind and can easily be oriented and held in place anywhere on the object. Their magnetic field provides just enough gentle force for the brake to mend almost seamlessly. The repaired splint is the fourth from the top in this photograph. Sometimes a brake spans such a large area that mending it requires the addition of new supports. Aaron built such supports using Japanese paper, a favorite material of conservators. Made from long fibers that cross and recross in many layers, Japanese paper maintains surprising strength whether wet or dry. Modern conservation philosophy holds that all repairs should be reversible since one never knows when newer, better techniques may develop. Conservators also believe that viewers should not be able to mistake a repair for part of the original object. Authenticity is important. Original portions of a conserved piece should be distinguishable but repair should not distract the viewer or affect their appreciation for the overall piece. To prevent the white paper from standing out against the darker wood, but remain evident as a modern repair, Aaron toned it using acrylic paints. Over the years, broken bits of ash splints had accumulated in the bottom of the basket. Aaron's greatest challenge lay in finding where each tiny piece belonged, proving that you really must love puzzles to become a conservator. Before she could reapply the broken pieces, Aaron had to reshape warped fragments so that they fit in their original place. When making baskets, artists soak the splints in water to render them soft and flexible enough for weaving. Once dry, splints harden into shape, but as wood ages, splints can become quite brittle. To soften the brittle sprints for reshaping, Erin had to create her own humidifying chamber. She placed a container of water and denatured ethanol, a common alcohol-based solvent, in a lidded plastic container along with the dry splint pieces. Using a device called a hygrometer to check the humidity levels, Erin monitored the splints until they reached the desired 80% relative humidity and were soft enough to be reshaped. She then weighted them down, allowing the pieces to dry for the next 24 hours. Once they dried and regained proper shape, Erin worked them back into the basket, piecing them one by one into place using adhesive and paper backing. While some may think it excessive to invest such time and effort in stabilizing and repairing a single damaged basket, this project not only provided invaluable hands-on experience to a future conservator, but also preserved a very important early American object. Erin's intensive work on this single basket continued for more than four months, and her meticulous work will allow this important Native American artifact to be enjoyed by Winneter visitors for generations to come.